If you need the extra juice for your smartphone, then you're in the right place. Oh my god, that's awesome. Cause I'll be reviewing a variety of cool and well-known magnetic power banks to charge up your iPhone in 2024, so stay tuned. What's up everyone, welcome back to Tech Up. So it's been some time since I covered a good amount of magnetic or MagSafe power banks for your iPhone, and in this video I'll be covering some cool and notable ones, as well as some that you voted on in a community poll to see which one may be the top one to get. Initially I wanted to review one more in this video, but realized that it would take a bit longer to get and test out, and that was the Belkin 15 w G2 magnetic power bank but I'm sure I'll eventually drop a video on it with a few other ones in the near future when there's more 15 watt G2 power bank options out there. Cause as of now and going into the second half of 2024, there aren't that many out there and several brands are still pending to come out with some. Anyways, I believe a good amount of these are still great choices that I'll be going over, and like in my previous reviews, I'll cover the specs and features on them, and let you know how great they magnetically hold onto your iPhone, and how warm they get to determine which one would be the best one. But realistically, you'll be the one to determine that for yourself. By the way, all of the power banks will be tested on my iPhone 15 Pro Max to give you an idea on how they perform on this iPhone. So without further ado, let's get into the review by going over the features and designs of each, starting with Anchor's 10K 15W G2 power bank. Since it's one of the newest power bank options out there by offering 15 watts of wireless charging speeds solely from the power bank without the support of having a cable plugged into it to get you 15 watts. Now if you're interested in more of Anchor's Qi2 power banks and accessories, I did cover several in another video that you could check out right up here. Anyways, this MagGo 10K power bank comes in several color options and packs 10,000 milliamps of battery capacity. It also features an in and out USB type port with a power button to turn on and off the power bank. Moreover, it offers simultaneous and pass through charging. Aside from that, it comes with a kickstand on the back of it and a really nice smart display that provides battery percentage info for the power bank, as well as charging and recharging time details on it. And that's a lot better than just having a few small battery indicator lights somewhere on it. Overall, I think it's a pretty great power bank, even for the money and size, but I'll give you my overall opinion towards the end of the video. Alright, moving forward with more 10k power bank options out there, Basis's 10,000 milliamp 20 watt power bank is certainly a reasonably priced option compared to Anchor's G2 power bank. However, with this one, unlike Anchor's, is that wireless charging speeds won't reach 15 watts without a cable. So that's certainly something you'll notice if you're planning on getting more battery in a shorter amount of time on the go. The max wireless output will be 7.5 watts, but aside from that, the power bank is available in other battery capacity options, either in a 5000 milliamp or even 20,000 milliamp battery capacity. All of them, including this one, pack a power button and an in and out USB-C port, as well as some battery indicator lights. Moreover, it's capable of dual charging, so you'll be able to charge a device wirelessly, while also being able to charge another device with a cable. Overall, it's a solid choice for the money, but it packs less cool and neat features than the Anchor Qi2 power bank. As for the Banks MagClap Juice Pod Power Bank, it's another 10K option that is similar to the Basis Power Bank, but comes with more ports. It includes one USB-A port and one USB Type-C port. It also features a power button and battery indicator lights, and comes in several color options. Not to mention the best thing about this power bank are the two ports, where you can charge up to three devices at a time, which is very beneficial for those situations when you charge several things on the go. Personally, it's a better option compared to other ones that offer the same capacity since you can charge more devices. Now, Banks also offers another juice pod smaller and thinner in capacity with 6,000 milliamps of battery if a 10K power bank is a little too much for you. But if you aren't someone who's into bigger capacity magnetic power banks, then the Taurus Ostan power bank can be a great smaller option. Taurus definitely makes decent and sensibly priced phone cases, and this power bank delivers on that with several different color options. 
Now, unlike the other ones in this review, this thing comes packed with a 360 degree rotatable stand on the back that can really help with configuring your iPhone in many ways when using and viewing it. And that's not something you'll find with the rest of these power banks. Furthermore, it comes with a USB Type-C port that can offer up to 15 watts of charging and packs a power button as well as some battery indicator lights on the back of it. And out of all of these power banks, this is by far the thinnest and lightest of the bunch. So if you're looking for something not as thick or noticeable on the back of your iPhone, this could be it. As for the last power bank that I tested out, this one is sure to stand out from the rest of these, and it's the Moonside Maglite. Now, its coolest feature that you won't find on any other power bank are the 67 LED RGB lights that can be configured using their dedicated app. Through the app, you can adjust the lights to whatever colorway you'd like, and there's many more features in the app. Now, this is the smallest power bank of the bunch with a 4000 milliamp battery capacity, and it features a USB Type-C port that can output up to 15 watts. As for the rest of the power bank, it comes with buttons on it to turn it on or off, as well as adjust the lighting modes on the fly. Not to mention, you'll also find lighting on the back of the power bank. And if you're someone that's into photography or making videos with your iPhone, this can be a great power bank, especially if you get their creative pack with the bundle of accessories like the MagPod, Tripod, and MagFlip that can enhance your experience with creating content. But for the price, it can definitely be a little too much. However, I'll cover more of my experience with it towards the end of the video. But let's finally get into the weeds with these power banks, starting with the magnetic strength on them before I cover the charging speeds that you would get when charging your iPhone with them. So the first series of tests I conducted were the shake tests with all these power banks on the bank's iPhone case. I tested them on this particular case because it has great magnetic strength on the back. And after going through all the tests, most of them held on, but slightly shifted out of place. As for the Anchor MagGo 10K power bank, it shifted out of place even more than the others, but that's because of the significant weight of it. As for the Moonside MagLite, it definitely has the weakest magnets on it, as it didn't pass the shake test with it falling off. And when testing out the magnetic strength with the Gauss meter, the Moonside MagLite certainly turned out to have the weakest magnets with the lowest Tesla reading, while the Basis 10K 20 watt power bank packed the strongest magnets based on its high Tesla readings. Now, if you want to know what the charging speeds were like on all of them, the Anchor MagGo 10K power bank came in first with the fastest charging speeds, while the rest of them came behind it. By the way, all of these charging tests were performed with my iPhone 15 Pro Max when it hit 20%. And for all of these tests, I didn't rigorously use my iPhone to watch a ton of videos or play games, because if I were to do that, then the results would have been lower. Anyways, I'm pretty sure you got the big picture here with which one performed the best with its wireless charging speeds. Last but not least, if you're concerned about how warm these power banks can get when charging your iPhone, I did test that out as well with an infrared thermometer. And the Anchor Mag Go had the lowest temps after testing it out, while the bank's power bank came in a little bit warmer and the Moonside Maglite turned out to be the warmest of the bunch. By the way, all of these temperature tests were conducted when the power banks were at their peak temperatures and charging speeds, because towards the end of the charging process when the power bank offers less charging speeds, it results in cooler temperatures. And that wasn't the ideal time to test their temperatures to determine how warm they got. But based on these results, I'm certain I gave you a good idea on how well all of these performed, and now you can decide on which one to get. Overall, in my opinion, the clear winner in terms of charging speed and temps is the Anchor MagGo 10K power bank. So, if you're looking for the best performing and most featured packed option, it's definitely this one. But the turnoffs are the price and the weight, as well as how thick it is when using it. So, if weight and price are a concern for you, then the Basis and Banks 10K power banks are a great alternative with slower wireless charging speeds. But if 10,000 milliamps of battery capacity is too much for you, then the Taurus O-Stand power bank, in my opinion, is an awesome choice, 
especially since the stand on the back is easily adjustable for various viewing angles. As for the Moonside Maglite, to me it's one of the most unique power banks I've tested in a while, and if you're a fan of the LED lights it packs so you can use it for lighting things up when taking pictures or recording videos, I can certainly see it being a nice MagSafe accessory. But when it comes to its overall charging performance and other tests that I performed on it, it was certainly the worst out of all of these options. So, in the end, I hope I helped you out in seeing if any of these are good power bank choices for your iPhone. If you're interested in any of them, I do have links to all of them down below in the description. I also do have a good amount of other MagSafe power bank reviews, so feel free to check those videos out down below at the end of this video. As always, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more future content. Lastly, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back here for another review.